In February of 2008, we had a wildfire outbreak in the Commonwealth. It was a clear sunny day, it was a Sunday afternoon, but we were in the middle of a drought. All of a sudden the winds came up, the power lines went down in the woods, and we're off to the races. Wildfires all across the Commonwealth. When I got here, we had no idea what was going on. We knew we were getting calls from all over the place, from uh, emergency managers and responders in the field needing help, but we couldn't get our arms around the severity and the scope of the incident. I asked our GIS manager for a map of the fires. Three hours later, still no map. Three hours after that, we got a map that showed where the fires were three hours ago. Not a very useful situation. Ultimately that day, we had fires in over 60 of the counties in Virginia, it was a huge incident and we were behind from the start because we couldn't visualize the problem. So from that grew a requirement for dots on a map. We wanted to know what was happening, where it was happening, and when it was happening in the Commonwealth so we could get situational awareness. That requirement is what grew into Viper. We've known where incidents occur, but in terms of knowing what's around, uh, so say where schools are, where hospitals are, um, who might be affected, how bad is bad? Um, those sort of context questions have been difficult to get at historically. So if I have a hazardous materials incident put in the state EOC's web EOC system, that's a piece of information. But when we take that information and apply it to the critical infrastructure and display that around the hazardous material incident, now I have context. I know what does that incident mean to me. There's a school nearby, there's a hospital nearby, there's a nursing home nearby, and it changes that information for me. It allows me to analyze it and make an appropriate decision. That's what Viper's designed to do. The Flex API created for Viper actually fits seamlessly into our existing architecture. We were already using ESRI ArcGIS server. So the fact that the Flex API worked with uh, 9.3 uh, made everything completely easy to use. We didn't change anything and the most important part of this story and the real success is that our end users didn't have to change anything that they do. And anytime you can make it easy on an end user, you're always going to be more successful when you try to launch some sort of new technology. Your end users uh, will think you are a rock star because you're able to roll this out through a web browser, which is so empowering, especially given security concerns of today. You don't have to worry about people that need to download something on computers. They can get to it through a web browser, which makes it more portable as well. They can get to it from home. In the, in the era of telework, they can check it at home, check it at work. It's very empowering to the end users and very helpful to the IT staff. So if you're operating in a disaster, where communications infrastructure is damaged or degraded or even destroyed and you need to use this via satellite or via a air card from the field, um, you're able to because it doesn't eat up a lot of bandwidth. It's a very light application. We've gone so far as to outfit all of our field personnel with small portable satellite kits that can be set up on the hoods of their trucks so they can access Viper from the field and provide information both to us here and gain situational awareness by using the tool. The biggest impact of Viper is it's enabling the end user to use GIS tools on a daily basis without knowing that it's quote GIS. And so it's intuitive to them from an emergency management standpoint. So if there's an operator in the emergency operations center, the operator can interact with the information without having to go through me. Uh, so a tool like Viper allows uh, allows them as end users and operators to be able to uh, interact with information, to be able to make decisions quickly and rapidly and effectively. One of the concepts that we put into Viper that I'd like to bring out is we call it reporting by exception. What reporting by exception is, is answers the question of, I don't know what I don't know. What we've done with Viper is we've said, I want you to display something to me when it meets a predefined trigger point that we've established. When a temperature reaches below 32 degrees, a purple dot appears on the map. I don't want to see all the temperatures all the time. I just want to see the ones I'm worried about. When it goes below 35.6 degrees, a pink dot appears on the map. Why do I care about 35.6 degrees? Because that's the temperature that roads start to freeze at. So that's why it's this reporting by exception capability has been a true enabler for our watch officers in the EOC to monitor the Commonwealth all the time in real time. 
And being able to do that has been the force multiplier that's enabled us to actually be the ones making phone calls, alerting localities, instead of having to wait to be fed the information after an incident has happened. And that alone, Viper has truly revolutionized the way that the state EOC is specifically, and the emergency managers in Virginia in general, are doing their business in protecting the lives and property of the citizens of the Commonwealth of Virginia.